So, spawning in the top right position, we have got the Red Terran player. A lot of you may recognise his clan tag. It is, of course, EG. He's done rather well at Dream Hacks in the past. It's Thorzane. And his opponent, spawning in the bottom left hand corner, representing BWF. He is from Sweden. Uh, like a player of the same name from Korea, but that player is someone different. I'm really excited to see how well this guy stacks up. Um, we've seen him in DreamHack Opens in the past, I do believe. So guys, let's have a little bit of uh, countryman pride here for Tails. Of course, both these players have been in Sweden for some time. So um, it's going to be a TVT here, not a TVP. And uh, we'll see what they get up to. We can see the gas being taken rather early here from Tails, as opposed to Thorzin, who hasn't taken it at all. So some very, very early game shenanigans coming up here for him indeed. Let's see if he's going to be using this to possibly grab a Reaper or two early game, or if he's going to try and go straight into his factory as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Thorzin is getting... Uh, just a barracks at the moment. It looks like he's just going to be expanding off of this. A second barracks is also going down from Tails in the corner of his base. So he is looking to be very, very aggressive with his opener here. Now, that's not a bad thing, actually. I think getting a Reaper on this map, Star Station, you've got so much cliff area as well that you can just utilize it incredibly well. It can be incredibly annoying. Thorzane, we'll wait to see what he's going to do. But with that command center nearly, well, just getting started now, he could be in trouble. As an, ooh, second barracks, Jorosa. That's right. That's the sort of thing I like to see. It's, uh, well, it's finished already. He's going to be uh, producing double Reaper out of this. So this is looking like a pretty serious attack coming in here from Tails in the early game. A Marine just going to be shooing that SCV away. What did he see? Nothing. He's going to be pretty happy to see the command center has gone down on the low ground because it means the investment into military this early on in the game is going to be minimal for Thorzin, but he hasn't yet seen that. The first Reaper, though, will probably get a glimpse, and two are being produced at a time. So let's see how well Thorzin holds on here. Well, for the moment, the Reaper is on its way forward. Two Marines are currently out. A third one is just over half finished. The Bunker is trying to go down here for Thorzane, and ideally, Tails does not want that to complete. The Marines are going to be able to push the first Reaper back, but with combat drugs, he can keep poking for a long time. The second, third, fourth Reaper, they're all going to be making their way across, and Tails has got to keep them all alive, and he's got to make sure that Thorzane is unable to get down too many Bunkers as well. Yeah, that's right. Once the bunker's complete, this could be a significantly larger problem if he wants to head in. He'd obviously have to go in via the cliff face. But that gives Thorzane options because he thinks that the Reapers wouldn't be able to come by this area anymore. So he only has to keep his Marines on the cliff and it just makes it slightly easier to defend. Uh, we're going up with three Reapers simultaneously now into the main base. And it's three Reapers versus three Marines, so this is not going to be great uh, for Thorzane. All the SCVs being pulled now as well. He knows that this is a, a class one, a critical situation right here. Several Marines going down. He's trying to pick apart the last Marine, able to do so. And now he's picking apart SCVs. Is Thorzane going to go down here in game number one? He is going to take a lot of damage here. He's losing so much mining time. And of course, more Reapers are just still on their way over. The Marine count is so incredibly low at the moment for Thorzane. And because he was getting an add-on for that barracks, he has not got enough stuff to be able to produce against this. The final Marine Force and Thorzane is taking massive losses down to just 15 supply. 25 supply versus 15 right now. This is not looking like good times. SCV's getting into the bunker, but they're not actually uh, doing any damage, of course, to these Reapers. No guns are issued to those units, I'm afraid. He's trying to micro SCVs in and out of the bunker. And right now, Thorzane is looking like he's in a world of hurt. 14 supply. He has got a Hellion out on the field now as well. Is it going to be enough, though? These Reapers are doing so much damage, and behind it, look at this. its He's going for his expansion behind it, too, being very, very solid with his play here. And now five Reapers coming back into the main base. What can Thorzane do? The first Marine is about to go... Oh, no, he's actually was targeting the SCVs for a bit there, and two of the Reapers actually going down. That's a little bit catastrophic there for, the, uh, for Tails, and all of a sudden, three of those five Reapers are dead. But bear in mind, he's at 31 supply versus 13 right now, even though that engagement didn't go well. I think the big thing is, if he hadn't focused that SCV and had taken yes. down the Hellion first, yes. once you get two out, it's easy to deal with the Reapers, but just one can get easily focused fired. So that could have been avoided, but Tails has already done so much damage, as you said. He's over double the supply ahead of his opponent at the moment. The worker count and worker's killed count is massive, and that's something which you've really got to quite worry about. 20 SCVs down at 7 minutes 30 in the game. Yeah. Tails couldn't have 
prayed for a better opener. Yeah, absolutely right. And he's actually going to be going into a bio push as well, which I quite like. I mean, it makes sense. It flows into this build very well. He got a reactor on this barracks when uh, he was attacking with the Reapers. That gave him time to get the add-ons up. He's also getting Stim as well. It just lends itself to flow into this kind of play really, really well here. And given that his income is significantly higher than Thorzane's right now, he's going to be able to pull off a crazy amount of units for this follow-up push. So Thorzane... Uh, I mean, he's going to have to have uh, some serious uh, Tarsen-style holding here. It's going to have to be pretty intense, and I think that's a problem for Thorzane, because when you take a look at the incomes, the big thing is that Teos has got gas income at the moment. Meanwhile, Thorzane is only just starting to restart mining that, so tech-wise, he's going to be struggling. This defensive position as well, there's no way these Hellions are getting in there to do anything. Stim is on its way down. We also see for Teos, he's getting plus one infantry weapons, getting his factory, everything piecing together, but Thorzane's just finished up his starport. What is he going to be doing with that? It's going to be a Viking out, so clearly just wanting to be quite cautious at the moment. Yeah, I think Tails is going to wait here for a little bit. He knows that Thorazin can't do any um, poking and prodding right now. He's going to wait for Stim to finish. In my opinion, possibly also wait for Combat Shields as well. I mean, he might just try and go with Stim, but considering he's just started his starport and the reactor here, it makes sense to maybe go for the Combat Shields as well and get the first couple of medivacs out. And while Thorazin did actually get his starport finished first, he's... Uh, I mean, there aren't really any units for him to heal right now, which is why the Viking actually makes sense to try and shut down some drops. I just think the full frontal attack from Tails is going to be so powerful. It is. The other advantage of going Combat Shield as well is plus one is only about a third done. So that by time for that all to sync up really nicely and actually lead to an incredibly potent push. But for the moment, Tails doesn't actually have the gas in order to start that up, especially when he's trying to get those medivacs down too. So probably not going to be starting that up quite yet. We'll get it at some point, but... This next push, with or without combat shield, with Stim and plus one and the Medivacs, that is just going to be so potent. Now let's take a look at what Thorazane is doing in response. He's being very, very tersely at the moment, and no one can blame him. He's got his siege tanks up on the high ground inside his main base as well, because he wants to delay Tails being able to come in as soon as possible. These Vikings will actually play a big role in trying to dissuade any sort of massive drop play. And uh, Thorazane, he's actually going to be camping out here with a barracks of all things, so... Uh, might as well have a little bit of vision of when this third potentially gets taken or when units decide to walk by there. But if Thorazane can hold on for long enough, maybe, just maybe, he can macro his way back to parity right now. But he's still at 63 supply to 94. And if we take a look at the worker supply, he is still 10 behind. And there is a scan at the natural... Does the scan see the, the tanks? tanks? That could be a problem because the push is on its way forward. And of course, those tanks can potentially do so much damage, but they're not covering the natural base. A lot of damage is going to be done here, potentially. The SCBs are going to try and get in in order to start repairing that orbital command. But as such, a lot of them can potentially go down. But those tanks on the high ground are doing so much for Thorzane and are really minimizing the damage that can be done here. Uh, I like that he made the orbital lift and he's just going back home. He recognizes he has a much larger army, but the position here isn't great with those tanks. So he's saying, well, guess what? I'm going to make you lose minerals left, right, and center here. And then I'm just going to head home and try and increase my advantage. I'm still mining off of two bases. My income is significantly higher than yours. You're doing a good job holding on here, but what you can't do right now is get ahead. He's now going to try... Oh, let's see how effective the Vikings are because there are four Vikings here and Tails is going to be going for a big drop in the main base. Now the Vikings, if they do get into the right position, could be quite useful, especially if they can take out those medevacs, but already the drop is coming down. Unfortunately, they're not going to be able to drop straight on top of the tanks, but there's a lot of units here anyway. The first tank is going to go down, but there's just a long siege line, and all of this infantry will now get cleaned up. Those Vikings really were the saving grace for Thor's aim there. There are still a couple of units over here picking apart the mineral line. So even though that drop uh, army to army didn't go that well, the remaining oh, fire actually base. killed some more stuff. And we have another simultaneous hit into the natural. And I think Thorzane is now starting to struggle. He's actually been trading quite effectively with these tanks. The problem is there's just too much stuff. So while he's trading effectively against part of the army, the rest of the army is busy killing SCVs in the meantime. And look at that worker count levels. Half the work is, is never going to be a good spot. Of course, Thorzane as well had to lift his natural base up repeatedly, reducing mining time. Behind this tells he's getting down his armory. He's just still macroing like a beast. He's pretty much a double the supply of Thorzane overall. And this is something which just means that he's going to be able to outproduce. Also, upgrade-wise, if I'm not mistaken, Thorzane doesn't yet actually have any upgrades, whereas Tails does have plus one at least. Um, he may even have the... No, he's just got plus one infantry attack. Doesn't have infantry 
armor yet, but does have his second engineering ray down, and once more, a drop into the natural. Yeah, and uh, he's, he's actually going to pick apart a couple of supply depots now, which, to be honest, isn't quite that big a deal, because the supply for Thorazine isn't huge. But uh, every building killed means more minerals having to be invested a little bit later on in the game. So, right now, the name of the game for Tails is to be as annoying as possible until he really gets enough army out here by this watchtower for that death push he's looking for so much. He's continuing to macro up, like you said, medals. The third base is down now as well. A couple of mules will get dropped here momentarily. And this is just continuing to be absolute carnage in favor of Tails. He's got a double engineering bay with those double upgrades up now as well. Thorazine doesn't have enough units to even harass right now. All he can do is stay at home and hold on for dear life. It's really rough. Now, this is a big drop coming in. There are missile turrets there, but there's no Vikings there to support it. That means the infantry coming in. At the same time, the natural base is getting sieged as well by Tails. So he is just everywhere all at once, and it's just been such a thorn in Thorazine's side. And yeah, even though the main is taking a little bit of damage, it's the natural base that took the big hits. The armory is going to fall, and that is just such a good snipe off, hurting Thorzane's upgrades even further. The third base is up the tails as well behind this, which Thorzane doesn't even know about until now. And yeah, this is just going so far in Tails' favour. He's nearly 100 supply ahead of his opponent, and things not looking good for the Evil Genius's player. Yeah, this is a really great example of, uh, and there's the GG. So we'll talk about that in just a second. So Tails does complete the upset. Our Swedish Terran player takes Thorzane in game number one.